on April the 8th, a total eclipse will cross the United States, moving from south to north, from Texas to Maine almost seven years after another total eclipse crossed the USA in 2017, going from west to east, from Oregon all the way across the country to South Carolina. That 2017 eclipse was the first path of totality to cross America from coast to coast since 1918 almost a century before, 99 years before. So a total eclipse is very rare, and yet here we have two total eclipses marking a large X across the United States in less than seven years. Now, is this a sign from heaven? Jesus said in the last days, Great signs shall there be from heaven. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. For centuries, people have considered eclipses to be momentous in some way, in one way or another. In these two very rare eclipses, crisscrossing each other within seven years, is Almighty God taking a black marker and drawing a dark mark of judgment across the heart of America from top to bottom and from coast to coast, separated by roughly seven years? Let's take an honest look at this rare episode. The time between these two eclipses is not exactly seven years, so we must not conclude that this is a fulfillment of any seven-year period in Bible prophecy. I've heard people say they think this is a fulfillment of the 70th week of Daniel, but that can't be for two very good reasons. First of all, everything in the Bible tells us we have not yet arrived at the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 9. That final seven-year period, the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy, is yet to come, and that seven years will end with the final 42 months of tribulation, and then the battle of Armageddon. And second, as I said, the time between these two eclipses is not exactly seven years at all. It's six years and seven months and 18 days. So it's really closer to six and a half years than it is to seven years. So it's not the fulfillment of any Bible prophecy. But is it a sign from heaven concerning the United States of America? Is it a black mark of darkness, a large X marked across the United States, two rare eclipses crisscrossing the heartland of America in less than seven years? And when we say it crisscrosses the very heartland of the USA, Here's something I discovered in my research. The 2017 and 2024 eclipses crisscross an area that is called the Eclipse Crossroads that is an area of about 9,000 square miles, which is roughly the size of New Jersey. It covers parts of southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, and western Kentucky. Now, the center line of any total solar eclipse path is where totality lasts the longest, and towns located on this center line often promote themselves as being the best place to view an eclipse. Of course, when two eclipse paths crisscross, there is one singular point where both center lines meet. For the 2017 and 2024 eclipses, X marks the spot over Cedar Lake in Jackson County, Illinois, which is in southern Illinois. The town adjacent to Cedar Lake is Macanda, Illinois, with a population of about 500. The nearest city of any size is Carbondale, Illinois 
which is located only about three miles to the northeast of Cedar Lake. Both Macanda and Carbondale are touting themselves as the place where the two center lines cross, the Eclipse Crossroads of America. Now here's what I find very interesting. Every 10 years, as you know, the U.S. government conducts a census of the U.S. population. And every 10 years, the U.S. Census Bureau determines the center of the U.S. population. This is not the geographic center of the USA, but it is the center point of the U.S. population. In other words, this is the spot on the map where you have just as many people to the east as to the west, where you have just as many people to the north as to the south. And that's a calculation that is made after the census to show how the U.S. population is shifting over the years, over the decades. Now, the center of the U.S. population, based on data from the 2020 census, the current center of the U.S. population is Hartville, Missouri. Now, that is interesting in itself because uh, Hartville, Missouri is at the center, the heart of America, the heartland, the center of the U.S. population is Hartville. But here's what I find very interesting. This heart of America, this dead center of the U.S. population located in Hartville, Missouri, is less than 200 miles west of where the two eclipses crisscross. In other words, these two eclipses crisscross at a point that is almost the dead center of the U.S. population. And consider the United States is about 2,500 miles from coast to coast. So the dark X marked across the USA by these two eclipses is pretty much dead center with the US population. If this is a sign from the Lord, maybe he's saying that it's not about the East Coast or the West Coast or the North or the South, it's about the whole country. I've talked about this a lot in my videos. The U.S. is without question the cultural leader of this world. What happens in America does not stay in America. The U.S. exports its culture, its social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. They are used worldwide and they influence people worldwide with American culture. U.S. made movies, music, television programs, internet influences, trends and styles and fads flow out of America to all the world as from no other country. The United States is the new Babylon, and I hope you'll watch my many videos that talk about this phenomenon. The moral decay, the social degeneracy of America infects the entire world. Judgment is coming. But just as it was in the Bible days when the heathen went from bad to worse, the Lord is waiting for the fullness of time. In the Old Testament, God spoke to Abraham and told him that his descendants would become a great nation and inherit the promised land when the iniquity of the Amorites was full. In other words, when the sins of the people occupying Canaan land reached their low mark, then God turned the land over to Israel. In the same way, America is degenerating day by day, and judgment is coming when the sins of this nation, America, are filled up to the full. Right now, America, the new Babylon, is leading the world into worldliness and a one-world order under the Antichrist Donald Trump. The Antichrist and the ten kings who give him their power and authority will turn their ire and their fire upon New York City, the United States city of power. The Antichrist will betray his own hometown and his own country. They will burn New York City, that great city, 
the richest and fattest and most corrupt city, that great city of U.S. power and wealth, that great seaport city. All the merchants and traders and sea captains and sailors and the world's great men and all who prospered from trading will wail and cry out when she is burned down. And this will be the beginning of the end for America and all who trusted in her adulteries and her idolatries. Then the Antichrist New World Order will reach its low mark when all the armies of the world are gathered together with the Antichrist world ruler and his false prophet gathered at Armageddon to make war on the returning Lord Jesus Christ. You know how that story ends, thank God. The Lord Jesus will raise the dead in Christ and change those in Christ who remain. They will all be caught up to meet him in the twinkling of an eye and they will all be mounted on white horses, the army of heaven, and they will return to earth with the Lord, where he will set his feet on the Mount of Olives. The Mount will split in two, and you can read the whole story in the books of the Bible. Judgment upon a rebellious world is coming. Judgment upon the USA, the new Babylon, is coming. Perhaps the Lord is giving us a sign from heaven now. A warning to all who have ears to hear. The days are short. The time is now short. In the beginning, the Lord determined that the final last days of earth history would be short. They have already been shortened. That was baked into the cake. Many things must take place in the next few years. But it will all happen quickly. For the elect's sake, the days are shortened. Now, there are some immature teachers or influencers, as they call themselves now, who are teaching that the Lord has shortened the last days down to five months, or some say we are in the final few weeks now, and that is immature and foolish teaching. All the Bible prophecies must be fulfilled, and there are many that must take place, and they will take place just as they are written in Scripture. The Lord will not change his everlasting word. Jesus said everything will be fulfilled to the last jot and tittle. Every little word, every prophecy, every promise, everything will be fulfilled to the letter. God will not whittle down his word and change what he has written in stone. Everything God has foretold in the Bible will come to pass exactly as it is written. That will take some time, but he will do it in short order. When God says the days are shortened, he means that in the beginning, before time began, God foresaw how all things must end. And at that time, he made the last days to be a short time. They were shortened at the beginning of time. For the elect's sake, they were shortened to give mercy to the chosen few. That has already been done. That is already made short. But everything written in the Bible must be fulfilled. All the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy will be fulfilled. All the time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. All the time of tribulation. All the time of the two witnesses. All the time of the last plagues and the wrath of God. All the seals must be opened. All the trumpets must be sounded. All the bowls must be poured out. Many things must take place in these last few years, but the time is cut short already for the sake of God's beloved children. Yet the good Lord could call me home today. He could call you home today. As the old saying goes, when you put your boots on in the morning, you don't know who will take them off that night. It might not be you. Every beat of your heart is a gift from God, and He knows when your heart will stop beating. He may call you out of this old world today or tomorrow. Are you ready? Do you have a close personal relationship with the Lord? 
Have you turned to God with your whole heart and asked him to forgive your sins through Jesus Christ? Have you believed in the Son of God who came into the world over 2,000 years ago? Do you believe he lived a sinless life and went to his death to save you from hell? He suffered. He was tormented. He was mocked. He was hated. He was nailed to a cross and he poured out his blood. He gave his life to pay for your sins and for mine. He died there on that cruel cross and he was taken down and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Do you believe he did all that for you and for me? Do you believe he rose from the dead and his disciples rejoiced to see him alive again? Do you believe he ascended to the Father and is now at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe he is coming back soon? Do you believe his word? And do you believe this gospel, this good news? Be sure of your salvation. Be sure of all these things. Believe and be saved today. And then tell everyone what Jesus has done for you. He has saved your soul for all eternity. Heaven is your home. He has placed you in his forever family. And you have a host of brothers and sisters in Christ. And all the host of heaven is your family. All the joys and gladness of heaven are yours forever and ever. And as we finish out our journey here on this earth, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you.